Dr. Sarah Wheaton, and today I am going to be sharing with you five tips to make the most of your veterinary visit. Before I get into my presentation, I always like to introduce myself to my audience. So hi there, I'm Dr. Sarah Wooten. I am a 2002 graduate of UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine. I spent 16 years serving pet parents just like you and dogs and cats in clinical practice as a small animal veterinarian in California and Colorado. Now I write and I speak. I am a regular contributor to PetMD and Chewy.com and the Hills Pet Nutrition blog, as well as several other publications, including DVM360. I am also a certified veterinary journalist, which means I spend a lot of time talking to people just like you. Most importantly, I am a dog mom. This is my dog. She is a golden doodle, and her name is Alma. Before we get into this presentation, it is always important to put up this slide, and it is a medical disclaimer. Basically, what it says is this presentation is not a substitute for seeing your local veterinarian for healthcare and any concerns that you have. The information contained in this webinar is not intended or implied to be a substitute for any professional veterinary advice. It is provided for educational purposes only. You assume full responsibility for how you choose to use this information. Now let's get down to business. Is this ever your face when you go in to see your veterinarian? I have been seeing pet parents for years and years, and I see this face a lot when pet parents get into the veterinary hospital. It can be very overwhelming, and you can have a little bit of a brain freeze and not really remember the things you want to ask or not retain the information that you need to or not bring the information that you need to. The veterinary visit is very, very overwhelming with all sorts of sights and smells and ideas and emotions. There is a lot going on, which is why you need to be prepared before you go in. This very reason is why I have made this slide presentation, this webinar for you to watch, because it is really important for you to be able to make the most of your veterinary visit. It takes your time and it takes your money and your pet's health is at risk. So having said that, I have created the five P's to make the most of your vet visit. The first P is primary caregiver. The second P is pertinent information and pictures. The third P is prepare your questions. The fourth P is prep your pet. And the fifth P is be present. Let's talk about the first P, primary caregiver. So taking a pet to the veterinarian, I like to think of it as taking a child to a pediatrician. When you take a very young child to the pediatrician, you are basically that child's advocate on all levels. That child can't tell you what is wrong. That child can't tell you where it hurts. That child can't tell the doctor what's going on. There is a lot of similar parallels between taking a very young child to see a pediatrician and taking a pet to the vet. That's why it is so important that the primary caregiver for a pet is the one who takes the pet to the vet. The reason is this primary caregiver has the most information about this pet and is an invaluable source of information to the veterinarian and the veterinary care staff. Furthermore, that primary caregiver is the decision maker for the pet. I can't tell you how many times I have seen pets at the vet who have come to see me and maybe the daughter has brought the pet or the husband, you know, the husbands, they don't know very much sometimes, um, or maybe grandma or the babysitter or somebody other than the primary caregiver, the one who really knows what's going on with the pet is there with the pet. And then when I go to ask that person questions, they're like, I don't know, I don't know. Furthermore, they can't make the important decisions that need to be made, especially in emergency or sickness or illness situations and in wellness care situations as well. 
Uh, if your veterinarian recommends additional wellness care uh, for a pet and you're not there to make those decisions, then your pet may be missing out on really important wellness care that can contribute to a long and healthy life. That is why the person who takes care of the pet the most should always be the one, if at all possible, who takes the pet to the vet. The next P is pertinent information and pictures. When you bring your pet to the vet, there is a lot of information that needs to be shared, both from the veterinarian to you and the veterinary care staff to you, but also from you back to the veterinarian. Remember, you are the one who knows what's going on. And so that information is really, really important to your veterinarian to make the best decisions about your pet's health. Pertinent information can include things like all vaccines and parasite control that your pet is on, including flea, tick, and heartworm, and other dewormers. Uh, all vaccine records that you have, bring them with you. If your pet is on any medications, that is very important. Either bring a list of those medications with the dosages and how often they're given, including refills, or bring the, even better, bring the medications with you. Also, if you give any supplements, that is very important to know as well. A lot of pet parents are giving their pets omega-3 fatty acids and CBD oil, which is great, but these supplements can interact with other medications or procedures. So it is, they can also delay wound healing in the, in the event that your pet needs surgery. So it's really important that your uh, veterinarian knows what supplements your pet is on, how often, and how much you are giving. What food you give your pet is a really important piece of information that a lot of people forget about. We'll have a slide on that here in a second. So any travel history, do you travel with your pet out of the area? Do you take your pet up to the mountains and go camping? Do you live part of your year in Maine and part of your year in Florida? All of this is really important information for your veterinarian because there's different parts of the country that have different parasites. And so your veterinarian may recommend different protection for your pet depending on your travel history. Any previous health history is also incredibly important. Any infections or diseases or surgeries, very important information. <clears throat> any changes in your pet's health or any changes in habits? Is your pet having different behavior? Does your pet need to go to the bathroom more often? Is your pet having a change in appetite or energy levels? Is your pet sleeping more? Is your pet having any problems with bowel movements? All of this is really important information. So even better, if you can have pictures of anything, that is awesome. So if you don't want to bring all those medications and supplements in, take a picture. If your pet has any kind of bizarre behaviors or take a video and bring it in. If your pet has any abnormal stool, then take a picture or Bring a sample of it with you. So this is all really important information. Pictures can really help, especially if you don't want to bring all those medications in with you. Take a picture of what you are giving your pet. Pictures can really, really help with supplements or food. I cannot tell you how often I ask a pet parent, what are you feeding your pet? And they go, oh, gosh, I don't know. It's the blue bag. So knowing what you're feeding your pet is really important, especially if your pet is not at a healthy weight and we need to help you feed your pet the appropriate amount. Well, we need to know exactly what that food is so we can calculate calories for you. So taking pictures and bringing this information in will help you make the most of your veterinary visit because your veterinarian is going to have the information that she or he needs to make the best decisions for your pet. So the next P is prepare your questions. Again, when you get into the veterinary office, there is going to be a lot going on. People are going to be asking you questions. There's going to be things happening to your pet. They may be taking samples from your pet. They may be giving your pet vaccines. Your pet might be scared and running all over the place. You might have kids with you that you need to manage. There's just a lot going on. 
So it helps before you even go to the veterinary office to write down the questions that you have for your veterinarian. So you don't forget anything. So questions can be things like any lumps or bumps you want checked on your pet that are new or have changed. Um, if you have questions about your pet's changes in any urination patterns or bowel movements, if your pet has any changes in mobility or pain or energy levels, if you have questions about appetite, if you have questions about behavior, honestly, anything weird, write it down. If you have questions about what you're feeding or what supplements or what protection you need or what's the best behaviorist for you to see or what's the best exercise for your pet, write it down. The more you prepare your questions ahead of time, the more you will get the information you need and the more you will maximize your value of the visit. Remember, that veterinarian and that veterinary care staff, they are a wealth of information and they love when you ask them questions. So get the most out of your visit by preparing your questions beforehand, writing them down and bringing them in. And don't be afraid to ask. Even if your veterinary care staff seems hurried, they are there to serve you. And if you don't feel like you're getting your questions answered the way you want, well, maybe you need to look around or bring that up to your veterinary care staff. Okay, the next P is prep your pet. I love this picture. You're taking me where to get what cut off? Okay, so there's no way to ever prepare a pet for that. But what? So prepping your pet for what he or she is going to experience at the veterinarian is a way to help the experience go better for everybody. It is a well-known fact now that pets are very afraid when they go into veterinary offices more often than you realize. They may have very subtle signs of fear or they may have very obvious signs of fear. And this fear can not only interfere with the veterinary care staff's ability to work with your pet, but it can actually hamper your pet's ability to get the care that he or she needs. And it's bad for their health. Not only that, it's bad for your mental health as well. When you bring a pet in and that pet is misbehaving because that pet is afraid. Very often I will have pet parents that will be very ashamed of how their pet is behaving and they'll say, I just don't understand what's going on. My pet is normally a very well-behaved dog or cat. Well, the thing is your pet is scared. And so we need to be able to reduce your pet's fear in order to get the most out of that veterinary visit. You may have heard of something called fear-free. If you haven't, look it up. Fear-free is a movement in the veterinary industry to reduce fear of pets, to make it so that more pets can have better visits and it can be a better relationship for everybody and a better experience for everybody. So Google fear-free and you'll see what I mean. A lot of veterinary clinics are actually fear-free certified. So when you go in there, you know that they are going to be using low stress, low stress handling techniques that reduce your pet's stress and fear and make for a better experience in the clinic. So what can you do at home? Well, one thing you can do is something I call happy visits. And basically that is when you take your pet to the vet and you do nothing except give your pet an amazing experience. So you give your pet treats and praise, or, and you let the veterinary care staff give your pets treats and praise and love and pets. That way, it builds an association in your pet's mind that when they go to this place, good things happen. Another thing that's really important is proper restraint. The flexi leads, uh, the ones that stretch out really far, those are not a good option for taking your pet to the vet, even if they're locked. I've seen accidents happen many times where a dog takes off unknowingly and the flexi lead isn't locked and it leads to injury and it can lead to dog fights, and it can be very difficult. So you want to have no more than a six-foot leash, and you want that dog to be on a leash uh, when, that pet, when that pet goes to the veterinary clinic. Cats should be taken in a carrier. They should not be taken in a pillowcase. They should not be carried. They should be taken in a carrier because you never know what's going to happen 
and the worst thing would be for a cat to escape accidentally and get injured. If your pet has uh, problems at the veterinary clinic, just calming down enough to get things done, talk to your veterinary veterinarian about pharmaceutical intervention. Basically what that means is giving your pet something to take the edge off before the visit ever starts so that your pet can be more relaxed. There's also stress pheromone sprays out there. There's feel away for cats and there's DAP, a dog appeasing pheromone, DAP for dogs. It comes in sprays and wipes and uh, diffusers or, or collars. You can also, for your cat, a lot of cats will get really freaked out in a cat carrier. Get your cat used to it by leaving the carrier open at home and letting your cat go in and out. Maybe put some treats in there or feed your cat in there and let your cat use it as a resting and hiding space. That way, when you put your cat in there, your cat's like, oh, no big deal. I like it in here. If your animal gets really freaked out in the waiting room, try to avoid that at all costs. Uh, you can talk to your veterinary care staff about your pet waiting in the car or outside until the veterinary visit is ready or to have that pe uh, pet and you put into an exam room immediately because a lot of times the stress of the waiting room or the other animals that are stressed, that will, that will actually be contagious to your pet. So avoid the waiting room. And then lastly, manage your own anxiety. A lot of people come in with their own anxiety and hangups about the veterinary clinic. And that's understandable because a lot of sad and scary things can happen there. And I find a lot of people are unconsciously holding their breath and they are coming in with fear that they don't even know they have. And sometimes when I say to the pet owner, just take a deep breath and they relax and then their pet relaxes as well. So manage your own anxiety as well. The last thing is be present. Anybody ever feel like this lady? I feel like this lady a lot of the time. I'm a mom, I got a lot going on, and life is busy. Our minds are often going in 15 different directions at once. So it's really important that when you are at that veterinary visit, that you are entirely mentally, emotionally, and physically present. So mentally step away from your to-do list while you are there. Mute your cell phone and put it away. If you can, find a sitter for the kids and don't bring them along uh, unless they're very quiet and well-behaved because that can just cause the entire visit to become even more stressful. Don't bring other pets unless they have an appointment. A lot of people will bring the other pets along for emotional support, but the more pets we have in that veterinary office, the harder it gets, the more likely disease gets spread around. So we only want the pets that need to be there to be there. Ask questions until you understand. If you don't understand something that your veterinary care staff is telling you, then ask them to state it in a different way to clarify. And don't be afraid to say, I don't understand what you're saying. Can you please say it again? Some of us are visual learners. Some of us are tactile. Some of us are auditory. It's okay. So ask questions until you understand. And then don't be afraid to ask why and how does this affect the outcome if your veterinarian is recommending things to you, such as testing and things like that. Um, knowing that can give you the information that you need to make the good decisions for your pet. And then don't, also, don't be afraid to ask for treatment options. More times than not, there is more than one way to treat any problem. So ask for treatment options and see what they can tell you. Okay, so there you have it. The five P's to make the most of your vet visit. Make sure the primary caregiver brings the pet. Bring all pertinent information and any pictures of any information that you need to bring. Prepare your questions ahead of time. Prepare your pet and be present. Thank you so much for, for watching and have a great day.